Hello and welcome to this demonstration of the Fedora desktop for the Linuseum.com. Today we'll be uh, taking a look at the desktop and uh, the version of Fedora we will be using is Fedora 15 which is currently the latest version. So let's go ahead and log in. So here's the logon dialog. So I've already typed my password in so let's just go ahead and click on the log in button and Fedora will take a few seconds to start up my session. Okay, so here we are in the uh, default Fedora desktop with the default wallpaper. Um, as you can see, it's fairly spartan here, but I, I think it has quite a nice um, uncluttered, fresh look about it, um, especially compared to some of the uh, its uh, rivals such as Ubuntu. Um, can't quite put my finger on it, but it, it's a nice crisp um, interface. Along the top here, you've got your main menu bar with which you, uh, most of your interaction with Fedora will take place. And in this main area here is just purely the desktop whereby you can actually uh, open and view your windows. So let's go and take a look at some of the menu functions available with Fedora. So first and foremost, up in the top left-hand corner, you have a link labelled Activities, and this is really key to using Fedora. So if I click on the Activities link, or indeed I press the uh, Windows button uh, on your keyboard, it will bring up this Activities mode. As you can see down here, I've got a number of icons representing my favourite applications, uh, which you can add to and uh, remove from and we'll look at that in a little bit later. In this main center part of the screen, we have um, a representation of one of two things at the moment. We've got the Windows view, which shows us all the open windows on the desktop. Of course, we haven't got any windows open at the moment, so nothing is displaying there. Um, but if we click across on this Applications link, that area changes and gives us a view of all the applications um, installed on the system. So um, if you like, these, this favorites bar down here gives you a list of uh, your commonly used applications. But if you ever want to go off and um, grab hold of a, uh, another application which you haven't got in your favorites bar, you can come down to this applications area and look for it. You can either scroll down the list like this and uh, just click on the application that you want, or you can actually um, click up here in the search window and uh, I'm just going to type in K on, and you can see there's my application Kino that it's found. That's quite useful. Um, if I click back on the activities link again, um, let's say for example I wanted to add some application, new application into my favorites because I'm always using it. So um, let's go back use the example we did before of Kino. So I'm going to go back, click on my applications link here. I'm going to type in um, Kino. Immediately found it here. What I can do is I can either right click it and add it to my favorites here, or I can just, if I click away from it, just drag it over to my favorites and put it in exactly the position I want it. Okay, and now if I want to invoke Kino at any time, all I need to do is click on the icon in the favorites bar and the Kino window will hopefully open up. There we go. If I find that the uh, position of the icon is not correct in the favorites list, I can change it by just dragging it to a new position. So say I want it second from top and then releasing the mouse button. And then likewise, I can move it to wherever I like in the order here. To remove it, I'll just move it up to the top so you can see it a bit better. I can right click this and I can click on remove from favorites and it will be removed. Okay, so what about swapping windows in Fedora? Um, well, let's, uh, let's demonstrate this by opening up a few new windows now. So you can see I'm on the windows view here. I'm gonna click open um, a single file manager window. Obviously this allows me to graphically uh, traverse uh, the files on my system. I'm just going to open, let's say, a um, screenshot system and let's take uh, Firefox as well. So I've got three windows open here on the screen. Obviously I can resize them. 
and moves them around. Now if I click back into the activities area you can see suddenly we've got these small versions of the windows a bit too large to be called thumbnails um, but they're representations of the actual windows on the system as you can see this one is the uh, browser here we've got the file manager and here we've got the screenshot so um, if I click hover my mouse over them rather um, I have this little X in the corner not sure if you can see that if you click on that that will actually just kill the window straight off and rearrange my two existing windows and this and if I just click on any of these pictures what it'll do is it'll take me straight to that window there so you can see this windows on top that's the one it switched to likewise if I go back here and I click on this window it'll take me to this so that demonstrates how you can switch between windows but that doesn't seem that um, useful on the face of it. Um, where it does become quite useful is where you use multiple uh, workspaces on the desktop. So if I click back into the activities area um, you can see if I slide my mouse over to the right hand side we have a representation of the current desktop and uh, a new virtual workspace here. So what I can do is I can take any of these windows and in which case we'll take this one here and I can slide it over to my second workspace and you can see immediately now if I click on workspace 2 I get the one window click on workspace 1 I get my original window so we've now separated them out into two virtual desktops and if I click on this window now I'm on desktop 2 and if I go back and I click on this desktop and click on the window I'll be taken back to that workspace so that's uh, a really neat way of com compartmentalizing your um, windows into two discrete areas and uh, so for instance you might want to keep your work stuff in one workspace and your home um, applications running in another workspace okay so that is the activities area um, but what about these other menus available at the top let's go through them from uh, left to right okay first off let's take a look at the calendar menu that sits under this time that sits at the top here if I just click on the time it'll open a little dialog here uh, on the left we have uh, a calendar showing the current day uh, and a, uh, an option here to change your date, current date and time settings on the system. Uh, over here in the right hand pane it tells me what appointments I've got in my calendar uh, for today and tomorrow, in this case nothing. Um, and if I actually want to go ahead and add a new appointment I can click down here on this link here open calendar and that will open up my uh, calendar uh, client. and uh, evolution will open up which is the default calendar application and let's let's create a uh, an appointment here down at three o'clock new appointment I'm just going to type in some text and save it and then I'm going to quit out and then if I look back in this menu here hopefully you can now see that um, this appointment is now listed here in the uh, appointments list. So that's the calendar. And just to get rid of it, you can either click away from it or hit the escape key. Okay, on the right hand side of the screen, you'll see four menu options along here. And let's look at these uh, from left to right. Okay, well first up here we have the accessibility menu. If we click on that one, this allows you to change uh, the screens to make it a little clearer um, for you to see, um, especially for people who are uh, visually impaired or sights not so good. You can click on, for instance, the zoom option here. Click that on and as you can see, fonts get a bit bigger and as I move my cursor, the whole screen scrolls in order for me to be able to see the whole screen. Um, so that could be quite helpful. Let's put that back to normal. Next along we have the sound menu and here we can change the the volume of the the sounds and we can set up any devices here so if you've got a webcam or uh, speakers or things you click on here and it'll open up a new dialog box where you can actually uh, um, 
configure um, various bits of hardware along here. Just going to take that out. Next along we have the network settings. You can see we've got a wired network. It's on, it's performing. If we want to change the setup, um, fiddle with the IP, DNS, etc., we can click on this and it'll bring up a new dialog box where we can actually uh, um, play and configure this, play and configure a network proxy, etc. Um, this final menu here is the user menu. Um, here's where you set your chat status. If you're using Pigeon or Empathy, you can uh, set your status here to be available or busy so other people know um, whether you can be contacted or not. You can change your account settings so you can set um, set up your name, um, address, telephone, contact details, um, associate a photo with you, etc. Um, system settings here, this allows you to change various settings on the system. We'll come back to that in just a moment. Uh, these next three options allow you to control your session, so lock your screen so that nobody can uh, can uh, um, get hold of your data while you walk away. Um, you can switch users, so you can uh, basically log on as another user, um, do some work and then come back. Um, or you can log out of your session completely. Um, finally, at the bottom here, there's a status called Suspend, which um, basically powers down the PC but keeps all the data in memory, so it uses a minimum amount of electricity. Um, it's very good if you walk away from the PC and you know you're going to be away for... Um, you know, 10, 15, 30 minutes, you can just suspend it and then come back to it um, when you're ready and um, hit any key and it'll start up the machine again. Um, you can obviously, uh, if we go back to system settings here, we can configure it so that we power down uh, into that suspend mode after um, a configurable amount of minutes. So let's go ahead and open the system settings dialog. This allows you to change various uh, the way the system interacts with you. So here we are with the uh, system setting window now opened. Uh, let's just move that one around. So we've got various options on here such as uh, changing the background on the system, uh, setting up your messaging accounts, your region language, screen. Um, down here we've got uh, various settings for changing the display, the keyboard and how the mouse works. We've got the network setup power down as we talked about earlier, um, setting up printers and removable media etc, create new user accounts down at the bottom here and set date and time, um, all that sort of uh, good stuff for your session. So I think what we'll do now is we'll just click on the background icon and show you how to change the backdrop on the system. So I give it a single click, up it comes, as you can see here's a representation of the current background, which is the default. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to click on this down arrow. I'm going to look for a, uh, a photo that I can use um, from my pictures directory. So I'm just going to use this one from the Linuseum. Okay, and as you can see, it immediately changes the backdrop here. And we can change how we want it displayed here by this little box. Um, whether you want it centered, scale, fill, um, tiled. I'm going to put fill. There you go. As you can see, that's kind of stretched it a bit, so um, I can change that to scale. And yeah, I'm quite happy with that, so I'm just going to click the X button. Okay, so with our background in place, I think uh, all that remains to be done is to actually log out of the system. So I'm going to go up here to our uh, user menu, and I'm going to choose the log out option. Um, note, by the way, that there is no option to actually shut down or restart the system. That's because under Fedora you need to log out of your user first and then you'll go back to uh, a logon menu where you have the uh, opportunity to actually shut down or do the restart. So I'm just going to click log out. Uh, Fedora will ask you to confirm the log out. Um, and that I think concludes our look at Fedora 15 desktop. Thanks a lot for watching. Bye bye.